I'm back. And this is going to be for you. So, we'll catch up. But, um, so I've been asked to talk a little bit about the ICU, the intensive care unit. And uh, I think for, you know, one of the reasons why I was asked to talk about this is, is because it's probably one of the more, a little bit more frightening places in the hospital because you go into the intensive care, obviously someone who's in there is, is very, very sick. Um, there's somebody who is going to need uh, more constant observation and they're probably hooked up to um, many different monitors and have a lot of different lines going into them and you kind of get there and you're going, wow. Um, so I, I think what I'd like to impart with you right now is just to, you know, to give you some sense of, um, I, I guess, comfort, more comfort when you're going in to see a patient who's in the ICU. And yes, there are a lot of bells and whistles and tubes and what have you, and, uh, but they're still a patient and they may or may not be conscious. Some of them are, some of them are not. Uh, but they obviously need, you know, your, you know they, they need to be ministered to like, like anybody else, or and you, you already know this. But I think for your benefit, um, you know, not to be afraid of the tubes and what have you, um, you'll probably, there's alarms that might be going off. Um, so in that case, again, not to worry, again, in that particular unit, um, you know, they probably have a, uh, an EKG. So they're monitoring their heart. And so the, at the nurse's station, they have something, it's telemetry, so that they're able to actually see and observe what's going on, even though they may be, you know, 20 feet away from the patient. So they, they it's kind of a control station where they, they really do have the ability to, to see and hear what's going on. So they, they probably are connected to a heart monitor. Um, they, as I said earlier, they may have a ventilator, something to help them breathe. Uh, they may have oxygen on, so, you know, the mask with oxygen. They may have um, IVs, and several IVs. They may be have, you know, they, depending on what they need infused into them, what types of fluids, they may have an IV in this arm, they may have an IV in this arm. You know, it's typically um, a needle that's allowing fluids to go directly into the bloodstream. They may have a port, um, and this is something that would be, um, you know, in the chest area that they can, again, um, because of the, the fragileness of, of the blood vessels in your arms, and they're, they're smaller, they may need to get into a bigger vessel, and so you have a port situated on the chest where they can actually go in and administer you know, medications or what have you. They may have a feeding tube, you know, something that goes, the tube that goes in through the nose, and uh, essentially it's getting food and nutrition, liquid nutrition directly you know, into, their, um, into their stomach and, and you know, not having to, to eat, if you will. So, a lot of different things they may have. To, I talked earlier about the catheter, urinary catheter. So for your benefit, I mean, you really, things that are, all these things that are on their bodies are pretty much, they're, they're probably fastened pretty securely. So, you know, if you need to touch them or touch their arm or touch their hand, you're not going to hurt them and you're not going to dislodge anything. Uh, but just to be aware that, you know, this stuff is there. And if you, like I said, if no one's coming, if you hear, a, a, sometimes IVs, you know, they, they'll go dry. They're, they're done infusing, and so a monitor, the, the, there will be an alarm or a bell that goes off to alert them um, that they need to replace it or, or what have you. So, um, so just to be aware, I think, of those things is probably what I wanted to impart uh, to you today relative to the ICU. Again, it can be a little bit of a scary place, but it doesn't have to be. And there are patients who are more sicker than others, depending on where they're, you know, what's going on and where they're located. Um, I don't know, anything else I, I should? I mean, they probably just want to know that because it's ICU, that you really should be conscious of how many visitors you have in ICU. Mm -hmm. Be conscious of the patient, what's going on with the patient. Um, so try to limit as, as many people that are in there. Um, the nurses are there to ask questions. I think the biggest piece you need to take away from this is the physician is your friend. Mm -hmm. Ask the, the questions, even if you have to write it down. And let me tell you, I write it down for myself when I'm a nurse. Because I go in there with a set of questions, he starts talking and I forget five of them. And then I walk out going, I should have asked this, this, and this. So if you can write them down so that you know exactly, even for your loved ones, I, I do the same for my parents. We both of them go together and both of them come out and still don't know what happened. <laughs> you know, what did the physician say? I don't know. They call it something. Well, yeah. what was the name of them? Something. I don't know. Well, what, is it, what does it do? I don't know. I said, both of you went. <laughs> you know, so I tell them to write the name down so that I can investigate and I can call the physicians on, on their behalf. Because, you know, sometimes people take in certain amounts of information and you're very overwhelmed. So if you need to have a clergy or a pastor or somebody in the room to help you, assist you with whatever is needed, I think that's the takeaway from, from ICU. It looks scary. 
But just remember, ICU is the sicker of the sick. So just be very wary of noise and things that go on around. Maybe your loved one's getting a little bit better, but maybe somebody else's loved one is not. So I say always, you know, if you can't say a prayer for somebody else, and if you can assist somebody else while you're there, you know, I always say to, to my children in life, it's about paying it forward. You never know when you're, you're gonna need something or someone's gonna need something. So you may think that you don't know anything about anything, but everybody knows something. Well said, thank you, Nina. Okay, if there are no more questions, I'm going to bid you adieu. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>